at Ram Saints from last week. Following the Saints' win, head coach Sean Payton had a little something to say about Marcus Peters. And, well, yesterday, Mr. Peters responded. Take a look. Well, that was the plan. They were going to travel Marcus to him, and, and that was fine by us. You know, we thought we really liked that matchup uh, a lot. Tell Sean Payton, keep talking that we going to see him soon. You feel me? Fair enough. Yeah, because I like what he was saying on the sidelines, too. So tell him to keep talking that and I hope you see me soon. You feel me? And then we're going to have a good little, nice little bowl of gumbo together. <laughs> bowl of gumbo. Nice little bowl of Thoughts? gumbo together. Nice little bowl of gumbo. Is that a though. euphemism, a bowl of gumbo? Like, I, don't I don't know, know what, what the term is. is. I'll tell you Marcus what, Marcus meant Peters. It. He Mar meant every word of what he just said. Like, well, hey, scary. Sean Payton meant every word. For him to say, you know, we knew that Marcus Peters would travel with Mike Thomas. We like that matchup. A lot. That's a shot directly at the player. The a lot. With the a lot. The circle back. It was basically saying, we knew we were going to cook Marcus Peters. So Marcus yeah. Peters responded basically saying, okay, we're going to see him again. I will tell you this. Marcus Peters is the best guy to talk to after a game. I love listening to him talk. Yeah. No filter. Well, who's this guy? Marshawn's this guy. Marshawn's guy. Marshawn's guy. He's a little more energy. There's an earlier p moment Marshawn in that interview talk. where the microphone goes and he goes, why don't you back that microphone up out of my face yeah. right now? Oh, like, I didn't he said it respectfully, but like he was heated. You know what I mean? He's, he's like Marshawn, except fair. much more animated and energetic. Right. So it's exactly what we want. They're the opposite of Instagram models' pictures. No filter. <laughs> That's it. Keep it real. That's it. Um, Question for you. Yeah. You... In all of your years in the league, you're telling me that coaches are are talking trash to you? Yeah, not all of them. Not all of them. L let me say this. I feel like every coach talks trash to their team to get these guys motivated, right? That's mm -hmm. during the week, behind closed doors. That's totally fair. And then there's coaches that take it a step further, and they say subtle things in the media so their team could have their back. And then there's coaches that take a step further where they start calling guys out on the other squad during the week and then on game day. Mm -hmm. Rex Ryan was one of those dudes that would talk. Constantly. Talk to everybody. I remember watching him tell, it was D'Angelo Hall, we were just talking about this commercial break, that's why my brother cut your bleep. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is aggressive. Why would you say that to a player, especially one of the best corners in the game? And he would constantly bark at guys. You're a bum. Look at your hair. Look at your beard. Like, you're terrible. So I'm I would, the head coach, too, right? Head coach on the sideline. A guy would catch a ball and he'd be like, you would never play for me. What did like, Rex Ryan say to you? He was talking about me being a number two wide receiver. And he's like, we're going we're gonna to stop you all game. And I'm like, okay, this is 2010. Jets come to Detroit. And I think about it, I wasn't even focused on the fact that we were playing Revis and Cromartie. I was focused on the fact that I'm trying to cook his DBs mm -hmm. so I can look at him. And every time I caught yeah, a ball, thing. I was trying to make eye contact. <laughs> and I, I, by the time I looked up, I had 113 yards in a TD. And they squeaked one out on us in overtime. But the whole game, I was like, I'm out to cook whoever you put in front of me because of your coach. But isn't that, doesn't that work like against them then? I yeah. feel like if there was somebody here yelling at me the whole time, I'd be so on my stuff to prove them wrong. No, so, no, no, because like he's just going to light a fire under sometimes like coaches will say, Sometimes coaches will right. say certain things <clears throat> just so the guys behind, like your team, Jim Schwartz used to do it all the time. Sure. He would say like these he's hypothetical, the hypothetical things. He's like, like what? hey, listen, if I got to meet him at, half, at, the half, at the half line, at the 50 yard and fight him, I'll fight the other coach. And we're in a meeting like, yeah. But and he really, almost did. We're like, you're not going to fight the coach. But Man, I know you, we know, you're a preparer. You, you're very good with words. Are you telling me that you were that locked into the Rex Ryan thing? And you yeah. knew you were playing the Jets all week. And you knew he was going to talk. And when he talked and said that to you, you didn't have a line ready of like, yeah, but you like my feet, don't you, Rex? Oh! You didn't have that? No. Kyle! Come on, I was like, Nate. I know you like this toe drag swag, but I, my man! I, listen, I didn't want to go there. But the, here's the All's thing. fair in love and All's war. All's fair in love war. Because he doesn't hold anything. Talk. Rex will say the craziest things to players, and sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't. But I'm not mad at it, because when my coach talks trash, we always had his back. Mike, guess want to do some Mad Minutes? Yeah, let's do some, <laughs> some Mad Minutes. Awesome games here in let's Week 10. We had an amazing matchup last night between the Panthers and the Steelers. We've got highlights just...